Thank you.
century there was about 475 working mines in the district a lot of these had steam boilers they used to power their hoist and steam whistles to signal the shift changes there were also three railroads going through here as many as 50 trains a day and they would all blow their whistle and you could hear their whistles as far away as 10 to 12 miles we'll blow the whistle and see if we can listen to an echo There were two gold processing mills. One was named the Brody, one was named the Rosebud. Uh, all these towns and the gold mills were established in 1891. And in 1904, there was a fire that started down there, swept up the valley and destroyed everything, including the town of Anaconda. Anaconda was just ahead of the train, underneath that big pile of gray rock there. Uh, the Cripple Creek and Victor Gold Mine uh, recently buried what was left of Anaconda, and they moved their, put their leech pad over the top of a lot of that right there. 
Anaconda had a population around 2,500 people. It was the fourth city in the state of Colorado to have electricity and running water. Um, our railroad station was originally built there and did survive that fire. Directly across from us, the mine you see over there is the El Paso mine that was uh, open until 1975 when they had a fire in the hoist town and it was never rebuilt after that. During the later years of operation, it was used mainly for mine tours. The El Paso mine is 1,500 feet deep and has about 33 miles of tunnels in it. Uh, to the left of that, that yellow house over there is the caretaker's home, and there's still uh, it's still being used as a residence today. Uh, if you look further to the left, you'll see that wooden retaining wall above the highway there. That's part of the Mary McKinney mine. Uh, that piece of that wall was relocated. It used to be about 10 times that size, but uh, the mining company uh, rebuilt part of that as a part of their historic preservation um, stuff they do up here. Above that, that wooden head frame you see above there, that's also uh, been relocated from uh, further up the valley above Anaconda. That's uh, the Dr. Jackpot mine is what it was. Over to the left, you'll see the old workings on the hillside there. Uh, that's the Chicken Hawk number one and two mines up there. And those are noted, known to be some of the hottest mines in the district with temperatures up to 120 degrees on some levels. They tried to cool those mines down with a, a tunnel. And the tunnel is located below the sorting house, the bigger building there. You'll see just off to the right a little bit, there's a telephone pole down there. The base of that pole was right on the Midland Terminal Railroad grade, and right behind it was where that tunnel entrance was. And uh, during the winter time, the Midland Terminal train would come by and the hobos would jump off there and go in to stay warm. It was about 80 degrees in that tunnel year round. So they nicknamed that tunnel Hobo Tunnel. Now directly below us, the uh, road you see here is Highway 67 that goes south to Victor. That follows the roadbed, or it's built on the roadbed of Florence and Cripple Creek Railroad. That was the first railroad to arrive in the district in 1894, just six months ahead of the uh, Midland Terminal. And it was most profitable to pay for itself in the first year of operation, but only lasted until 1912 when they had a flash flood down Phantom Canyon that destroyed eight miles of track and 11 bridges. Um, that's a real scenic drive heading down towards Highway 50. Comes out uh, east of Canyon City. And it's a one lane, well, a lot of, some of it's one lane, it's dirt, war, dirt road and uh, fairly washboarded. The other road to Canyon City is down below us, the one we see there. That starts in Cripple Creek and it's just 26 miles to Canyon on that road. And it's uh, called the Shelf Road. It's built on the old wagon road that used to come up here. And you go down there about 12 miles and you start falling the side of a big cliff. And that's uh, why they call it the shelf. Um, there's one lane road with little places you can pull out and let people pass you. But uh, that's also a scenic ride too, it's all dirt. Okay, we'll back up and turn around at the World's Fair mine. As we pull down in there, you might see on the be on the uphill side of the train. Right next to the tracks, there's a concrete slab covering the, uh, the mine shaft for the World's Fair mine.
back, you might have seen that World's Fair mine as we passed it. Uh, they put metal grates over those concrete covers a lot of times to allow access to the mines and also for bats to uh, go in and out of the mines. They live down there. Um, the big pile of crushed rock you see over there on the hillside is uh, Triple Creek and Victor Gold Mine. Um, that's their leach pad. And what they do is this up here is the largest open pit gold mine in North America. And that's just uh, east of Cripple Creek is where the pit is. You can drive up there and actually look into it. And they drill down in there and they blast the rock out. And then they crush it and mix it with lime. And then they carry it over here and they put it out on that pile. In the different lifts you can see the different levels. And then they put down a irrigation system. It looks like drip irrigation. It's a black plastic tubing. And then they send a cyanide solution through that tubing. It runs down through all the rock and it uh, dissolves the gold. There's about 20% silver and there's a little platinum as well. And they, uh, the solution gets caught on a liner. All that rock up there is on top of a double layer of heavy black plastic and it carries the liquid back down to the recovery building where they process the cyanide, send it back out over the pad. But last year they recovered about 430,000 ounces of gold and it's over over like $600 million that they pulled out of that mine in just one year. And they're the largest employer in Keller County with about 700 employees there. Okay, we'll uh, head on back towards Scribble Creek. Oh, I used to tell you about the mines too in Victor. If you happen to go over to Victor and go on the north side, there's some nice hiking trails at some of those mines there. And there's also uh, the biggest and richest mines were just outside of Victor on Battle Mountain. The deepest one was up there, the Ajax, that was the last one closed in 1985, and it was 3,350 feet deep. And the richest mine was the Portland, that produced around $60 million worth of gold, and that was 3,200 feet deep. And uh, all those production numbers that I told you today for all the old mines, that was back when the price of gold was only $20 an ounce on most of those mines. Now the price of gold today is around uh, 1800 Okay, we'll head back towards town now. And we'll stop outside of Cook Creek. Okay, we'll
falls down into the tunnel where they can shovel it into their ore cars. Then they roll the ore cars over to the shaft and haul it up the shaft. One of the biggest stoves in the district is in the 